Hello, I am Ashley from theruralcompanion.com. Today I'm going to walk you through some of our favorite simple crock pot meals. Now, the reason I am doing this video is to share with you why we love crock pot meals. One, because they're so easy, and two, because they are so fantastic for traveling. Now, we our family love to travel. We have done so since the kids were little and we often stay in hotels for at least a week and sometimes longer. Because of my husband's job, we travel with him as well. And this allows us to not pay for a hotel, but to be a part of the whole experience. While we're traveling, we like to have a crock pot, or other simple meals that we can make in the hotel room so we are not eating out as often, which cuts costs as well as keeps us healthier. In order to prepare crock pot meals while traveling, it means there is a lot more prep work involved. I have to bring along a crock pot, sometimes dishes, cutlery, a cutting board, as well as something to clean all the dishes and utensils with. It also means that I have to have a list as well as a detailed plan for what I will be cooking and making to make it as stress-free as possible while we are enjoying our trip. Sometimes before we travel, I will cook meals at home and put them into freezer bags and freeze the meals fully so that they are quick and easy for defrosting as well as heating up at our hotel or cabin. While this does add some extra work to travel, for us, it the benefits absolutely outweigh the hassle. It is something that we are willing to do for our family. So let me share with you my six biggest tips for cooking in your hotel. My first tip is cook the same few meals for every trip. Yes, this can become a little repetitive, but it saves the planning process and streamlines all of it. The meals that I'm showing you are ones that we make often and are so simple. Tip number two, limit the number of ingredients for each recipe. Now I'm not actually showing you this recipe, but a few years ago we did potato soup in the crock pot and it has become a favorite. So we actually make this often at our house, not when we're traveling because it's so simple. You need either fresh potatoes or dehydrated potatoes, whatever you feel like dealing with while you're traveling, some milk, some sort of dairy, either regular milk or cream, half and half, a block of cream cheese, and some cheese to sprinkle on the top. Four ingredients and you have a delicious warm meal. The rest of the meals that I will be sharing with you all use a handful of ingredients. This makes grocery shopping very simple, as well as if you are trying to store things in your tiny hotel refrigerator. Tip number three, Try to use repeat ingredients in all of your meals. Now, again, this is going to become a little repetitive. So what I like to do is make one meal, then a completely different meal. And on that second, nope. And on that third day, I would reuse some of the ingredients from the first day. This will give us a little gap in the similarities as well as the, uh, tastes of our meals. As you'll notice in the recipes that I'm about to share with you, I repeat things like shredded cheese in one meal and then in the next, a couple days later. We'll try to reuse um, tomato products or simple things that can be resealed and put back into the hotel refrigerator for a few days. Tip number four, make a very detailed grocery list menu, and timeline. Now, this is a lot of prep work, but again, the more prep that you do in the beginning, 
when you're at home before you travel, the easier this whole process will be. I like to plan out exactly how long each meal will take and to know if I need to put it in before we leave in the morning or if we need to head back halfway in the halfway through the day and put the ingredients into the crock pot. Sometimes the kids and I will go out in the morning for a couple hours, come back, prep our dinner in the crock pot, and head over to the hotel pool for a few hours while it cooks. Whatever works for you, the more prepared you are, the better it will go. Tip number five, I already mentioned this, but make sure you get a hotel or an Airbnb or a cabin that has either a partial or a full kitchen. Microwave, a mini fridge, sometimes a full fridge would be fantastic. And if you are able to get a kitchen that has a stove, pots, pans, silverware, plates, you name it, they have it. We stayed at a cabin in the mountains a few years ago that had a fully stocked kitchen and actually they inspired some dishes that I came home and purchased because of their simplicity. Okay, tip number six kind of contradicts tip number five, but if you're not able to stay in a room that has a fully stocked kitchen, use paper products. This one... <laughs> Okay, so I used to take along things with us that needed to be washed, and I have washed many dishes, uh, reusable containers, forks and spoons, cutting boards, etc., in the bathroom sink at a hotel. Over the years, I've tried to streamline this whole process and prefer to grab paper plates, napkins, plasticware, as well as disposable or really cheap uh, serving utensils like large serving spoons, ladles, things like that, that I could either leave in the hotel room or just toss so I don't have to bother washing and returning, filling up my suitcase, etc. Now that I've given you my six tips for hotel cooking, let's get to making some good food. For each of the recipes, I will show you what ingredients you need, as well as how to prepare the food. All of them are really simple. Just dump and go <laughs> to get you out of your hotel room quick. Now, just a little caveat, we are actually in my house right now, and all of the meals I made in my house. But we will be using these shortly as we are preparing for a vacation soon. For this recipe, you will need pasta, either regular pasta or gluten-free. You will need two types of cheeses, mozzarella and cottage cheese, as well as two jars of your favorite pasta sauce or one jar of pasta sauce and one can of diced tomatoes. I'm using this last option. To our crock pot, we are going to add one jar of tomato sauce and one can of diced tomatoes. Put your lid on and allow this to cook for one to two hours on low. Now our crock pot has been going for about two hours and our sauce is nice and hot. To our crock pot, we're going to add about one cup of warm water. About half of our bag of mozzarella cheese. We'll also add about one cup of cottage cheese.
Give this a stir and then add your box of pasta. Stir once more. and cover your crock pot, turn it up to high, and allow it to sit for about one more hour. After about an hour, your baked CD is finished. For this next recipe, we will be making chicken tacos. You will need either two chicken breasts or four to six chicken thighs. I have some that I pulled out of the freezer. We also need some salsa, a can of tomato paste, and taco seasoning. I am going to have our crock pot on high because I need this to cook in a shorter time period. You can also cook it on low for six to eight hours. Let's get started. Start by putting your chicken into your crock pot, then add a jar of salsa. and one can of tomato paste. As the chicken cooks, the juices will make a liquid in there so you don't need to worry about adding any extra water. Finish it off with about two tablespoons of taco seasoning. This is one that I've made myself. Put the lid on and allow it to cook for several hours. Now that our chicken is done, we are going to serve our chicken tacos. Either use a tortilla or a lettuce wrap. Serve it as you would your favorite taco with your meat and some fun toppings like tomatoes, jalapenos, lettuce, if you want some more guacamole, and or some sprinkled cheese. Another alternative is to make a rice bowl. Again, fill it with your favorite taco toppings like rice, meat, tomatoes, jalapenos, lettuce, and some more cheese. Enjoy! For this recipe, hamburger soup, you will need one pound of your favorite ground beef, a bag of frozen mixed vegetables, a bag of chopped butternut squash 
or potatoes and one carton of beef stock. Simply add all of your ingredients to your crock pot. Cover your crock pot and cook on low for six to eight hours or high for three to four hours. Okay, it's been about six hours for our hamburger soup cooking on low. We're gonna give it a stir and then we are going to serve it up. For this next recipe, we will be making a beef stew with gravy. You will need a small beef roast that fits inside your crock pot. Half of an onion sliced. And if you like mushrooms, one package of quartered portobello mushrooms. If you don't like mushrooms, you could skip this or you can add some other veggies that you enjoy, such as carrots, uh, baby carrots, chopped celery. Top with about one and a half cups of water Put your lid on and cook on low for six to eight hours or high for three to four hours. For this next part, you'll need to remove your roast and add a thickening agent to your liquid. Either you can use cornstarch or arrowroot powder. Either will work to make a nice gravy for your meat. Add about one tablespoon and mix well. If you're using cornstarch, mix it with cold water before adding to your liquid. You can shred your meat before returning it to your crock pot.
When you're ready to serve, serve as is or over top of pasta or mashed potatoes. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.